Sean Cox, and I'm, I've got some information that could possibly save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars if you're in the market to buy a Fender brand uh, electric guitar on eBay, Craigslist, or even at a local uh, guitar store. Um, so let's pretend that this guitar is on eBay. Um, and the buy it now price is maybe seven or eight hundred dollars. Um, so you don't know much about these guitars. Um, you got some money to burn. You really, you really want it. You think it looks good. So um, you look around at other guitars um, on eBay. Um, you know, let's say there's 40 or 50 of these on eBay. You're looking around. Uh, you come to find out that these guitars were in production from 1950 to 1969. Um, and you're looking at these guitars and they're, they're going for about eight grand. Uh, and you're looking at this and you say, well, you know, it should, you know, look pretty, pretty beat up. Um, so you're looking around some more and you find out that uh, they also made these guitars in Mexico and Japan um, as reissues um, within about the last 12 years. And those go for about six or seven hundred dollars. Um, there aren't that many pictures of it, but the buyer's reputable, the shipping is reasonable. So you say, all right, everything looks in order, and uh, you buy it. You take it to your local guitar store to get some new strings put on it, um, and they say, uh, I'm sorry, sir, this is, a, this is a fake, and you paid way too much money for this guitar. Um, I've been playing the guitar for about 20 years, uh, mostly this brand, and I've been assembling these guitars for about the last five years. I assembled this guitar by myself, for about $175, um, there's only one uh, piece that's actually Fender. Um, so what I'll be going through is uh, what to look for to avoid a scam. Um, you're going to want to look for uh, serial numbers. There's all sorts of books and websites that you can refer to uh, uh, to make sure that you're, you're getting the real thing. Um, like right away, this was a reissue Fender Esquire guitar. There would be a serial number on the back, and it would say right on the back here, made in Japan or made in Mexico. Usually if they're made in Japan, it would say it uh, down here. Um, and, and also, I don't think they came out with a uh, kind of a natural wood grain finish. Uh, that was more of a 70s thing. Um, and again, um, there are plenty of enthusiasts out there where you can, you can, you can find this out. Uh, just as easily as you could, as you can buy it. Um, so, if I was a dishonest person, um, I could uh, make hundreds of dollars off of this guitar. Um, so, you have a responsibility as a buyer um, and a seller too. If I ever part with this guitar, I am going to be honest and say that it is a fake. I put this decal on there myself. I stained and finished it myself. Um, a guy in Montana made this guitar body in his garage. Um, it's, it's not authentic Fender. Um, these guitar parts are the most uh, copied and imitated um, in the world. Um, there's a lot of fake stuff out there. You really need to know um, what you're doing. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to switch gears and show you an authentic uh, Fender guitar with a mixture of aftermarket and uh, vintage parts that aren't um, original to the guitar. Um, uh, this is a 1963 Fender Jaguar. Now I know that because um, when I got this guitar it was not complete and I had to round up some parts uh, to make it playable. Um, and in that process I had to do a lot of research, uh, just like somebody would um, restoring like a classic car. Um, if you take the neck off, which I'm not going to do, but if you take the neck off, there's going to be a stamp that says August, I'm sorry, April 1963. Um, so, so again, let's say somebody's trying to sell this guitar and they're trying to say it's 100% original. Um, I'm going to point out uh, how it isn't. Uh, first off, the tuners. Uh, Fender used a brand name of tuners are called Clusan. These don't, they, they say them on here. These, these don't say anything. These are uh, reproduction. 
I got them for about thirteen dollars. A, a cent, a set of vintage Cluson tuners could be one hundred or two hundred dollars. Um, also, um, I got this from a replacement uh, parts supplier. Um, if it was old, it'd be, it'd be kind of rusty. Uh, same thing with this part. Um, but where you could get tricked is this plastic piece. It's called a pit guard. Um, it is vintage. It's, I think, about a year older than the guitar. Um, this guitar does have the original finish. It's a Lake Placid Blue finish. Um, those guitars, this piece should be white. Um, um, also, this is reproduction, but uh, this is vintage. Uh, the guitar is a 63. This is a 1965. And as you can see, um, it looks apart. It's it looks like somebody drug it through the mud. Um, uh, that's another thing too um, with uh, the paint jobs. Um, guitars, unlike cars, if you have an original paint job, it's worth more money. Now, you take a look at the back of this thing. Somebody played this. This is from somebody's bell buckle. Uh, playing this guitar every night in, in, in dive bars. Um, if this guitar was refinished, it would slash the price in half. So you have to be careful of that. Um, in pristine, 100% condition, this guitar could be worth four grand. I would say it's probably worth half of that, uh, considering everything I just said with the replacement parts and parts that aren't um, original. Um, so again, um, you have to be really careful. Um, in conclusion, um, do your homework, just like with anything else, uh, buying a car, guitar, it's, it's, it's no different. Um, there's fakes out there, there's scam artists out there, and you have to be really careful. Um, again, there's all sorts of books and websites you can refer to. Um, these guitars are meant to be played. Uh, don't get played by a scam artist. Thank you very much. Yay!